Just when we thought Pop Smoke is at peace at his final resting place, news came about that the late rapper's crypt has been vandalized by several individuals, and evidence has shown that the perps tried to get into his casket. In today's episode, we'll look more into the details behind this story, plus several other reports related to the incident. Pop Smoke's resting place desecrated with vandalism. Fans and loved ones of Pop Smoke, whose real name was Bashar Baraka Jackson, had to deal with another distressing event. After TM TMZ reported that his crypt was vandalized badly, according to reports published on September 12, 2021. During the weekend, the media outlet shared the discovery that the late rapper's gravesite was utterly destroyed after the vandals thrashed his crypt, and evidence has shown that these same individuals tried to drag the rapper's casket. Photos show Pop Smoke's marble marker cracked and broken, while the rest of his neighboring crypts were left undisturbed. Debris was left scattered in the surrounding area, and there are even burned and discarded joint scene on the floor, along with some flowers. What's even more disturbing at the scene is how there are evident drag marks seen on the ground, which led people and the authorities to believe that the perps may have accessed Smoke's tomb and tried to pull something out of it, or at least they tried to. TMZ reported, several eyewitnesses stated that a concrete slab of some type that assumed to sit atop Smoke's casket separates his body from the one above him. Aside from the concrete slab, there's also a piece of rectangular object that was said to be a part of Smoke's wall enclosure as well. Sources also stated that it was unclear if the late rapper's casket was still intact inside the crypt, and said that the person who found the crime scene notified security immediately. A few hours after authorities have been called in, an eyewitness told TMZ that Pop Smoke's plaque has been temporarily covered with a blank slab with caution tape surrounding the area. Some of the debris initially seen were already cleaned up, although there are still traces of what took place in his crypt. A follow-up report was made, wherein the NYPD declared that the crime took place sometime between 2.30 p.m. on Friday and 2 p.m. on Saturday. But since there are no cameras present in the area, they're having difficulty finding leads on who could have done the act, with police still investigating the matter. The total damage done on Pop Smoke's crypt amounts to $500, but since there are no leads, suspects, nor arrests made, the question on who will pay for these damages remains hanging in the air. Brooklyn native rapper Pop Smoke fatally shot in Hollywood Hills' home. On February 19, 2020, the music industry was shocked to hear of Pop Smoke's untimely death after news broke of the rapper being shot in his home. Police reports claimed that in the early morning of February 19, around 4.30 a.m., four suspects in hoodies, with one of them wearing a mask and carrying a gun, broke into Smoke's home, where he was shot and killed. The authorities received a call from the East Coast reporting the incident, with the police discovering Smoke's body sprawled and bleeding on the floor. He was rushed to Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, where he died a few hours later. The authorities had difficulty with the investigation, given how several persons of interest were uncooperative. One of the first respondents to the crime was Captain Jonathan Tibbet of the Robbery Homicide Division. Local authorities were looking into several angles on what might be the cause of the crime, although Tibbet stated that he was not comfortable calling it a robbery right now. There is a lot of information available. We have some work to do. There is a lot of social media information out there. The house is in a neighborhood surrounded by video cameras. Tippett further added, another angle they were working on is if the motive of the crime was gang-related. The law enforcement has considered the late rapper to be connected with a street gang called the Crips, wherein detectives suspect that the shooting was gang-related and the assailants are likely gang members, yet they haven't proven whether gang rivalry was the motivation for the crime. The Los Angeles Times reported that a security camera across the street recorded a black BMW drive past the rapper's home around 2 a.m. with an individual getting off and sneaking toward the back of the house Smoke was renting before returning a minute later, then speeding off right after. During this time, Smoke was at a recording studio on Sunset Boulevard and returned home two hours later. Around the same time, another vehicle pulled up in his house with the headlights off. The vehicle used was an Infiniti sedan where four people got out and hid in the house's shadows along the side. Ten minutes later, three of these men ran back out of the camera's frame, and the fourth one walked out the front door with a gun and purse in hand. LAPD detectives described the incident as a home invasion that quickly turned into murder at court a week later. They believe it was a heist conceived by local teenagers with the alleged suspect snatching a watch from
purchased from Smoke's home and selling it for only $2,000. Several suspects were apprehended, attached to Pop Smoke's homicide case. Frank Flores and Carlos Camacho were the two detectives tapped to help with the rapper's case. Both detectives work under the robbery homicide division. It's believed that a social media post was the motive that edged the perpetrators to act on the crime. A day before the incident, detectives found a black gift bag from Amiri, a well-known luxury brand that Pop Smoke often referenced in his songs. The rapper posted a picture of this package on his Instagram account, wherein the house address was also seen on the label. But a talent manager noticed this and asked Pop Smoke to delete the post. Flores and Camacho reviewed the surveillance footage from the homes on the street, and the BMW and Infinity sedan caught their interest. With their resources, they were able to identify parts of the license plates and discovered that both vehicles were registered under 19-year-old Corey Walker. With this info, a judge signed a warrant that gave permission to both detectives to access a Google account linked to an email address Walker had provided when he bought the Infinity. A few hours before the shooting took place, Detective Flores testified that someone accessed said Google account, wherein several searches of interests were made. An excerpt from the Los Angeles Times read, at 2.45 a.m., the account's user searched the house's address and visited the LAPD's website, he said. At 4.08 a.m., the user looked up the address on the real estate website Zillow, which features several photos of the inside of the house. At 5.15 a.m., about an hour after the shooting, an internet search for Rolex Oyster Perpetual Datejust was made. And just before 8 a.m., the user queried Breaking News LA and checked KBC TV, Channel 7's Breaking News page, Flores said. TMZ had first reported the rapper's death earlier that morning. With these implicating records, the detectives obtained another search warrant for Walker's phone records that enabled them to retrace his movements through charting the cell towers off of which his phone had pinged. They discovered a series of locations with the help of LAPD specialist Sean Hansen, who handles data analysis for cell tower records. It was also through this process that they discovered another person of interest who was of minor age. Despite these findings, authorities didn't have enough hard evidence to make arrest until three months after the killing. In May, they managed to eavesdrop on a first-hand account of what happened, which Camacho later used to testify in court. They arrested a 15-year-old boy the same month, whose name was not related to the case, and placed him in a cell rigged with hidden recording devices. The officer listened as the boy told his cellmate of what took place the night of Smoke's death, and how he had taken part in the crime, which was conceived after seeing the late rapper's Instagram post with his address in the background. The boy further relayed how he and his friends planned to rob smoke of his thick gold link chain and diamond studded watch, according to Camacho's testimony. The boy also stated that when smoke retaliated, he shot him in the back three times using his 9mm Beretta. Walker was arrested six weeks later, and just like the boy, he too was placed in a cell wired for recordings with another cellmate who introduced himself as another gang member, but in reality was a plant for the police. Walker introduced himself as a member of the 74 set of the Hoover criminals and shared how he drove over to smoke house to do some recon and returned hours later with four youngsters. He also revealed that he didn't enter the premises and only recalled the events as to how it was told to him by his companions. Three juveniles were charged in court with Pop Smoke's murder, with one suspect still at large. If these three suspects were convicted, the juveniles would face a fraction of the prison time that Walker, now 20, will receive if he is convicted as an adult. And that's all we have on today's video, about rapper Pop Smoke's vandalized crypt and what we know of his murder. Thanks for watching today's video. We'll see you at the next episode.